Okay, so as we continue our series on Too Powerful for Marvel Movies, in this video, I wanna focus on Legion, on David Holler, because in reality, he is crazy powerful. I mean, it's, and it's, he's, he's powerful for a reason that you probably don't expect. So when it comes to, uh, when it comes to David Holler, he's the son of Charles Xavier and Gabriel Holler. And the way this worked was that Gabriel Holler, uh, was working in Israel at the time. And she was essentially a doctor in a ward that helped people who were basically dealing with like the Holocaust. And what ended up happening is Charles Xavier was using his powers to kind of help people overcome that. And like a romance blossom between the two. And they basically had an affair. And then David was born. The issue with this was that in the beginning, David never had, there was no indication that David had powers. And in fact, Xavier didn't even know that, that David existed. But David gave no indication he had any abilities whatsoever. You know, no telepathy, telekinesis, or none of that stuff. But all that changed when he and his mom were the victims of like a terrorist attack. There's this guy named uh, named Jamil Kamari who leads this like rogue faction, this, 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 you know, terrorist group that launches an attack. And in the aftermath of it all, David incinerates them, right? Like he kills every single person there. And in the process, he absorbs the mind of, of Jamil Kamari. And what this does is it basically gives David the ability to tap into telepathy essentially like he basically like absorbs Jamil Kamari's personality develops telepathy in the process and then goes forward starting to starting to develop like these multiple personalities because the trauma of the event was never properly dealt with and so over the years in Marvel Comics David's David's multiple personalities are just kind of multiplied over and over and over again and that's the reason why he's probably the single most powerful character in Marvel Comics is because David himself doesn't really have a whole doesn't really have much to speak of it's all the personalities that he has. David has thousands of personalities in his head, each one having a, having a power. Now, sometimes these powers are identical. You have characters out there who who can, you know, who give him like telepathy, right? You know, and then like he might have like 50 or like 500 personalities, all of which have telepathy, but they all have their own distinct personality. And so when they take over, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe they're benign. Maybe they're just downright evil. Like Styx, for example, was like a super evil personality of David uh, that can control masses, like masses of people using telepathy, but could also cast illusions and then had like a soul stealing touch like where if he touched you he would steal your soul from your body so like there were there were crazy powers that were there but like some of them or really a lot of them were pretty exotic but to give you guys perspective on on how wild these powers were so you had a guy named wolfman personality called wolfman which had a healing factor that was superior to both wolverine and deadpool so literally like like he healed faster and better than both wolverine and deadpool did which if you're not familiar with that deadpool is largely considered to have the best healing factor at least outside of legion deadpool is considered to have like the best healing factor in Marvel Comics, right? Like it's more efficient and it's faster than Wolverine's. So you have a character named uh, named Mora Kinross. And Mora Kinross was a character who debuted in Age of X. And Age of X itself was really a story that kind of like showcased how powerful the personalities of Legion were. So what ended up happening in Age of X is just like one day people wake up, like the world wakes up and things are starkly different. You know, like, like really it's all kind of confined on an island. There's a handful of X-Men there and they're constantly battling like the Avengers and things like that, or at least what would be the Avengers team. It's kind of disheveled, essentially battling humanity. But they never leave the building. And come to find out what had happened was one of the personalities of Legion, Moira Kinroth, had basically, uh, Moira Kinross rather, had basically like rewritten existence and, and warped reality in its entirety. Now, in reality, it's kind of confined to a localized space. And so it's really one of those assumptions that Moira Kinross can alter the entire fabric of reality. But we don't really know. Because in the Age of X timeline, in, in the Age of X story, we didn't really see anything outside of Earth for the most part. We just kind of saw things confined to Earth in this small localized space. So it could be that she's just like Proteus, right? Where she like, you know, warps or, or manipulates reality in like a small radius of like 50 feet or like like 50 miles or something along those lines but she can't like alter the entire fabric of the universe like Scarlet Witch during House of M. Really Scarlet Witch and uh, like she she altered the fabric of the multiverse like she changed she wiped out 90% of the mutant population's powers in the entire multiverse as opposed to just one single universe but you've got characters like Susan and Sunshine who can feed on people's emotions and then turn them into an actual energy. You've got Endgame who actually adapts to people's powers. You've got the Origamist who can fold space and reality, like literally space and time can like fold it all and, and turn it into whatever he wants. I mean, you've got like all these wild and exotic personalities here. And that's what makes Legion so dangerous is because oftentimes David doesn't even like David doesn't really have control of these powers. That was the whole idea behind the aftermath of Age of X. Like Age of X happens and then it gets fixed and they're like, okay, we have to figure out what's going on. And then you end up finding out that like somewhere along the line, all of Legion's power, all of Legion's personalities have basically broken free. So inside his mind where he had this kind of compartmentalization where these personalities 
personalities were kept in check, and he could kind of pick and choose which ones he wanted to take out. All the all the prison gates were open, and so the personalities were just like running amok. And so like one moment he would be J uh, Jamail Kamari, the next moment he would be Cindy, the next moment he would be Jack Wayne, the moment after that he would be in game, and then after that he'd be Susan and Sunshine. He would just start bouncing around through all these different personalities and, and all this kind of stuff. That in and of itself is why Legion is too powerful for the MCU, is because well, when it when it comes to characters that we've talked about so far, we've talked about characters that are largely self-contained, right? So you have like the Sentry or the Void, whichever one you want to talk about. You've got like Franklin Richards, or you've got like the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, and they're very powerful in their own right, but they're powerful in so far as they are a singular person with a singular personality who has a singular power. With Legion, you don't know who you'd be facing off against. You have no idea what version of that character you would be fighting. And so if you're Iron Man, you know, and, and Legion pops up, and suddenly he has one of his personalities that lets him control fire, then like he literally just like starts spewing all this fire at you, and like he's uh, he's he's bent on destroying the world, and there's nothing you can do. It depends on what version of Legion you're facing off against. And so because of that, he's way too powerful. Because looking at someone like like Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet, for example, right? You know, in, in the movie, Thanos has the Infinity Gauntlet, and he uses it for his own purposes, you know, and blinks out half a life in the universe or something like that, like that's controlling reality, you know, across the universe, wiping out half the half of existence. With someone like like Maura Kenross, she could just come back and, and bring it all back. She could just be like, okay, and we're done. Like we're just gonna restore half the life in the universe. And she could do that on her own. Just rewrite existence in its entirety. Like rewrite past like like the past and the present completely, assuming that she's able to function on a multiversal space. So again, it's it's a it's a, a very dangerous game when it comes to his character because for David, what what one of the things that makes him crazy is the fact that he had or one of the things that makes him dangerous is the fact that he has good intentions but goes about it the wrong way. Like a really good example is is um Legion Quest, the lead into Age of Apocalypse. Those of you guys who don't know, during during Legion Quest, there was a point where Mystique had sought to kill David because David had killed her lover, Destiny. And the result was that when, when she went to go, like, wake him up out of a comatose state, that he basically, like, imprisoned her. Like, he shut her down entirely and was like, I'm gonna fix everything. And so what he does is he ends up traveling over to, uh, traveling into the past, and then his idea is to kill Magneto before he can rise to become, like, a mutant terrorist, basically. And his, his whole goal here is, if Magneto doesn't exist, then it'll make the life of Charles Xavier a lot easier in terms of trying to form a peaceful coexistence between humans and mutants, because at the time, Magneto was very much, like, like a bad guy. He was very much, you know, just kind of, he had, he had like his acolytes and all that kind of stuff and like Asteroid M or Providence or whatever you want to call it. He had like all those things going on. But the idea was that Legion wanted to like destroy Magneto before he could rise to become Magneto. The issue was that when that happened, Charles Xavier jumped in the way of the killing blow and Charles Xavier died. And so at the moment that happened, the villain Apocalypse, who was watching the entire event unfold, chose that as his moment to launch his campaign for world domination and took over the entirety of North America. And because Magneto was nowhere near as effective of an X-Men leader as Charles Xavier was, what ended up happening is Magneto tried to create an X-Men team of sorts, but ultimately it was like a ragtag team. It was really more of like guerrilla warfare tactics and so on. And it all kind of went belly up until the very end when they were all saved by like Bishop, you know, and, and like the, the Imkron crystal, I think it was. But nonetheless, you know, it's, it's pretty wild when it comes to a character of that level of power. Because again, all these personalities are all have distinct abilities and some of them are very, very basic. Telepathy, telekinesis, controlling fire, creating fire, things like that. All the way up to the higher echelons of characters who can warp reality on, on like a universe scale. That's one of the reasons why Legion is so powerful. He's a he's a cosmic level threat. So again, like like when you're talking about the I'm sorry, you're talking about the Avengers, there's no way they could stand against a person with that kind of power. Because in reality, like like he could he could switch through personalities so fast that they wouldn't be able to keep up. I mean Doctor Strange would be the most likely person to be able to defeat Legion, but even then there's no guarantee. Because even Doctor Strange's powers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are fairly limited. In comparison to his version in like Marvel Comics, he's he's pretty weak. Now all that goes into the idea that the MCU is designed to make the characters more grounded. And so if what you got in Doctor Strange in the Marvel Cinematic Universe was like the 1970s comic book counterpart, it'd be ridiculous. Like people would just be like, well then just send in Doctor Strange because he'll fix everything because he can do anything he wants to. Alter reality, you know, time travel or like jump from dimension to dimension or whatever the case is. You know, so you got to kind of tone them down in order to make the stories believable. But even then, assuming that you even toned Legion down for the MCU, still, I mean, you're talking about a guy with thousands of personalities, each one having having their own power, their own, literally their own motives, uh, motivations, their own ideas, you know, their, the basis behind why they exist. And then functioning accordingly, and then literally unleashing absolute pandemonium on the MCU. So it'd be kind of interesting to see how that unfolds. But again, there's there's no real contest here. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just the Avengers trying to fight God, and it's, at the, it's just not really going to work out. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.